It is time for self-evaluation. Is your knowledge of scripture changing you or are you believing in vain? To help you think about that question, I want to share a story with you today from the Gospel of Luke chapter 20. Stay tuned. This is Grace Tidings. Hello and thank you for checking out this video. My name is Williams Oluagwemi. I want to invite you to visit Grace Tidings website for more on this topic. There is a direct link in the description section of this video. And if you find this topic useful, please like, subscribe, and share this video. There is a huge problem in our world today. It is the worst of all the problems that we have. The hearts of the people have gone farther away from God than ever before. The world has abandoned the absolute truth. The truth has now become relative to the people's preferences and circumstances. Among those who believe and still read the Bible, many have disconnected their hearts from the teaching of Scripture. The commandments of God have very little or no effect on their choices despite their knowledge of what the Bible says. This is a very bad place to be, but I have to tell you, it is not hard to get there. So you know the Bible. You know theology. You even read through the Bible every year. Thank God for that. But this is only the beginning. There are many people who know the truth, but are yet to receive it. A good example of these are the people in the story that I want to share with you today. Go with me to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 20. And my focus today will be on verses 19 through 22. The religious leaders in this text have been looking for a way to trap Jesus and get him in trouble. And Jesus made the matter worse by telling a parable which speaks to the heart of the people's rebellion. It was about a man who planted a garden and put some people in charge of it. You can read the full story in Luke chapter 20 from verse 9 through 18. Listen to the reaction of these rebellious religious leaders in Luke 20 verse 19. And the chief priests and the scribe the same hour sought to lay hands on him as soon as he finishes the parable. And they feared the people for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. They were quick to devise a plan to trap Jesus by his word. This time, they went political in an attempt to pitch Jesus against the government of his time in the matters regarding taxation. That takes us to the spies and their confession. The passage tells us that the religious leaders sent forth spies. These are people who feigned themselves as the true followers of Jesus Christ when in fact they are not. The part that I really want to highlight in the passage is what the spies say to Jesus Christ. Look at Luke chapter 20 in verse 21. And they asked him, saying, Master, we know that thou seest and teachest rightly, neither accepted thou the person of any, but teachest the way of God truly. Notice the two things that stand out immediately. They called Jesus Master, and they said, We know. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, that not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. There will also be people with much familiarity with Jesus and his teaching who will be far from the kingdom. The spies in this story called Jesus Master. Not only that, they also claimed to know something. And the next thing they said was an absolute truth. 
They said, we know that thou seest and teachest rightly, neither accepteth thou the person of any, but teachest the way of God truly. Are all those things true of Jesus? Absolutely, yes. And yet, they allowed themselves to be used as a tool to trap Jesus. They know the truth. They even talk the truth. But that knowledge has absolutely no impact on their choices and actions. Despite their knowledge and confessions, they are still in the camp of the enemies of Jesus Christ. At this point, I want to make sure that I clarify something. Knowledge is crucial. In fact, relationship with God begins with the knowledge of who He is, the awareness of who, of who we are, and what God has done to save us from the penalty of our sins against Him. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, the Bible refers to the importance of hearing and believing the gospel to be saved. And following salvation, the Bible makes continuous cause for the growth of the believers. We are enjoined not to remain children in knowledge, to desire the sincere milk of the world, and also to grow past the milk and be able to handle the meat of the world, which refers to maturity. Therefore, the knowledge of the truth is essential for the salvation of the unsaved and the maturity of the believers. But the problem with the people in this story is that their choices are detached from the knowledge that they possess. So it is possible for you to know the Bible and theology, enjoy studying and memorizing the scripture, discussing and even teaching it to others, even be able to win all biblical arguments, and yet without the word actually affecting your heart and your work. This is when your mind, your brain, your knowledge is disconnected from your heart, your desires, your choices. You may know the truth and even claim to believe it, but only in vain. It is a dangerous place to be because believing in vain can adversely affect your salvation, your Christian work, and ultimately your eternal destiny. For instance, you can believe the gospel in vain. Which is why many people will claim to believe in Jesus Christ and still remain unsaved. Why? Because although they claim to know and even sometimes share the gospel, they are yet to reckon with the truth that they know and actually trust in Christ alone for their salvation. They know all the facts of the gospel and yet the whole time they are depending on their own performance and righteousness rather than the complete righteousness of God. Look at the example from Matthew chapter 7 in verse 22. Jesus says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy, in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Notice how their zeal for God was not based on the knowledge that they have. Another example in, is those that are in Romans chapter 10. In verses 2 and 3, the Bible says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And here is the part that they miss. That's in verse 4. 
in Romans 10. It says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. If you are still with me until now, let me ask you this. Have you reckoned with this truth in your own life? In whom or what are you trusting to get you to heaven? And if you are genuinely saved, believing in vain can negatively impact your Christian work. This is why many believers don't have fruit or experience victory in their lives because they fail to yield to God and allow his words to change them. They go through the religious motion of church attendance, Bible reading, and so on and so forth, while their choices continue to be driven by fleshly desires. Such people must evaluate their claims of faith in Jesus Christ. So, do you hold to many truths, but you don't live your life by them? The proof, at least, that we can see that you have received the truth is the fruit of it in your life. Is your life being affected by the truth you know? Are you submitting to the authority of the Word of God? Do you notice any growth or progress in Christ-likeness in your life? I'm not speaking of a prideful evaluation of yourself, but a humble examination of progress in your Christian work. In closing, here are more challenge questions for you. What truth do you know today and you are still resisting? Do you realize that you do not have the truth or believe in something until you actually do something about it? Take a moment for a deep evaluation of your heart concerning this. And as you do that, remember that the purpose of the Bible is for us to read it and be changed by it. The scripture is not given to us for mere accumulation of knowledge, but for the transformation of our lives. It is therefore needful for us to yield ourselves to that transformation. But if you are not saved, you can believe the gospel today and be saved. The Bible says that Christ died for our sins and rose again. You and I are the sinners, but Christ is the Savior. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Thank you for watching. Until next time, grace and peace be with you in Jesus.